What's good, YouTube? It's Mary Boy Squid back again with another video. So OCG, they had a no ban list tournament, and it was pretty crazy. Since I couldn't really find anything on this uh, on YouTube, I thought I would share it. This took place, I think it was a little over a month ago, maybe two months. But essentially, the OCGs just went ahead and had this crazy tournament. They said, you know what? We're not going to use a ban list. Not only that but literally like any card that was banned is at three. So it's not just like traditional format where you get to play one copy of a banned card. Oh no, no, no. This is a tournament where you can play three of any card in the existence of the game that is legal for play, excluding the ban list. Okay, we're talking like three Pot of Greed, three Graceful Charity, three of everything. And it was insane. So it was quite a big turnout, as you can see here. You know, we already got around um, maybe like 60 to 70 players, given this breakdown as is. And as you can see, the most shocking thing is that tier limits are apparently the best deck with no ban list. I like I'm looking at this breakdown now. The most represented deck is tier limit somehow. You would think that it'd be an FTK deck, some kind of deck, degenerate deck that allows you to burn your opponent or Exodia and win on the spot, but no, no, no. Tier limit says somehow still the best deck in the format with no band list. That's how crazy this deck is. In fact, it might even be the most powerful tier zero deck we've ever seen in the history of this game, given what we're seeing here. And it's kind of funny that we don't actually see any dragon rulers, despite that deck being super, super powerful. I guess it's just from power crap that can't really do much. You know, like rank sevens don't do a lot in a tier zero, uh, three of everything format. So we have 20 tier limits. Um, there were also eight Zodiac decks. Uh, there were four Magical Scientist FTK decks. Obviously, like Magical Scientist not being once per turn, allowing you to fusion summon from your extra deck a level six or lower by paying a thousand life points. You could do that up to seven times a turn, you know, before your life points get too low for you to pay. Um, it looks like three Runic decks. I imagine playing some combination of Mystic Mine as well, given that that uh, card was at three in the format as well. Um, three Sprite decks, which is also equally surprising. Somehow Sprites, I guess, with a bunch of hand traps. Um, similar to Zodiac, where you're literally just like, playing every hand trap known to man to stop your opponent from playing and then simplifying the game state so you can make uh, either Dryden or Zeus and win. Two Bamboo Sword decks, which are likely also FTKs, uh, maybe like a some kind of a burn deck with, um, what is that trap card called? Uh, the one that uh, you flip it over and it burns your opponent for 100 times the amount of spell cards in your graveyard. Um, that you chain serial spell and you just win. So I guess it's like you fill your graveyard with a bunch of spells and then flip over a magical explosion. That's the name of the card. And then win. Uh, two Eldritch decks, which is very surprising. I guess they just won the die roll. Uh, they were planning to win the die roll. Um, two Numeron FTK decks is also really surprising. Maybe some Master Guild players are coming out of the woodwork there. Uh, two, it looks like a Dragoon. Some kind of Dragoon deck. I guess the, the OCG players love Dragoon. Like, it got banned. They were playing it everything obviously in the tc everyone's like all right this card is just bad red eyes fusion just a brick right two exodia decks not surprising you know being an ftk deck um and then two beast steel decks i guess they kind of predicted that tier limits were somehow the, like really good and they hope to somehow beat it but dodge the ftk decks un unsuccessfully and uh 14 others and in top four, actually, there were two tier limits. Tier limits came first, tier limits came third. Uh, second place was a Mystic Mind Burn deck. And then in fourth place was actually a Magical Scientist uh, FTK deck. So without further ado, I'll show you guys the deck lists. They're really, really interesting. Uh, I'm just going to minimize this. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the fourth place deck recipe, uh, which is the Magical Scientist deck. Uh, really, really interesting. Right off the bat, you can see there are three Drone Lockbirds, um, you know, just like the Hedge. They are playing one of a uh, couple of hand traps just because they play through cross out designator with the uh, through called by the grave as well. You know, this is an FTK deck, guys, okay? We need every um, bit of leverage that we can in order to push through the FTK on our turn. Um, through Maxi as well, obviously, you know, like they're predicting the tier limits and also uh, maybe Zodiac as well to be decently good. Um, and yeah, obviously we're playing like, you know, the works. All of the broken one ofs, well, like three ofs in this format. Three graceful, three pot of greed, three one for one. Bear in mind, this dude is level one for some apparent reason. And by the way, the effect is pay a thousand life points to special summon one level six or lower fusion monster from your extra deck. Um, that fusion monster cannot attack directly and is returned to your extra deck at the end of the turn. So this guy is like basically the original instant fusion. He's the guy who invented instant fusion. It's literally instant fusion on like a body on legs. Um, it's three one for one, two ring them out. We're also playing three tactics as well, just like super hard into the glue just to try and resolve a magical scientist by any means possible. Obviously two monster reborn, that pairs really well with painful choice, I guess, is a way to search it. You just reborn them back. And how the FTK works is actually quite interesting 
Um, you can see here there are a plethora of level sixes, but essentially you would normal summon the scientist or get it on the table somehow, pay a thousand to summon a Raijin twice. So you get two Raijins on the table um, and then pay again to uh, special summon out the um, Geomathmech Magma and the uh, Cyframe Lord Omega. And how it works is you can use those two to make a uh, Phantasmal Lord Ultimate Mish Balkan in this card. Uh, it must be special summoned by sending two level eight or higher monsters you control with the same level to the graveyard, including one tuner and non-tuner. And how the FTK actually works is really, really interesting. So again, we're gonna normal summon a magic scientist or get it on the table somehow, um, pay a thousand, and then we're gonna special summon any of these level sixes. So um, you can see that there's actually some toolboxes here. They do play this dual avatar monster. When it's special summoned, you can pop an attack position monster your opponent controls. So it's just like some utility. Um, this melodious monster allows you to banish three cards in any graveyard during either player's turn. So it's essentially an Ashizu monster on legs, which is kind of funny. But essentially, you would pay uh, 4,000 life points. So you're summoning two of these, two level sixes. And then you're also summoning two of the Alvain, the Essence of Vanity, which is a level two tuner. And then we're going to use those four monsters to make two level eights by Synchro. So we're going to make Geomath Magma a level eight tuner, and then also make a Cyframe Lord Omega, or I guess Crimson Blader, it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to use the two level eights to uh, Synchro Summon for Phantasmal Lord Ultimate... Bish Balkan. And essentially how this card works is cannot be synchro summoned. You actually special summon it by sending two level eight or higher monsters you control with the same level to the graveyard, including one tuner and one non-tuner, which Geomathmech Magma apparently is a tuner randomly for some reason. <laughs> and then you can special summon this guy. And then the other effect is um, it gains a thousand attack for every monster on the field. And then the other effect, the trigger effect is once per turn during either player's rain phase, you can special summon the same number of tokens on each player's field in defense mode. They they are zero, zero, level one um, tokens, and you summon as many as possible to both fields. So how it works? Okay, so you make the two level eights by summoning, you know, the two tuners and the two level sixes, and then you use the two level eights to summon Bish Balkan. You use, um, and then from there, uh, you actually uh, go ahead and use Magical Scientist again to pay two more K to summon two Invoke Raijin. These are level fives. You overlay the two Invoked Raijin for Chronomaly number 33, Machu Mech. This effect is the uh, essentially the win condition. Uh, once per turn, you can detach the XYZ from this card to target one face-up monster your contro opponent controls. Inflict damage to your opponent equal the difference between its original attack and current attack. <laughs> so you can kind of see where this is going. But this card is on our field, so we have to find a way to get it on our opponent's field. Because again, this guy gains a huge amount of attack. He's at zero, zero. He gains a thousand for every monster on the field we know we summon five uh tokens to our opponent's board um and then we're gonna summon uh three more tokens to our board because of the fact that we have two monsters right so he's already at 8k and then from there it's gonna be kind of funny we're gonna use a token to make link spider a token to make link rebel and a token use both of those to make geonator transverser so this has to be in the right column of course either in the first column or the third column so geonator transverser can point to it as well as one of your opponent's tokens and then we're going to use the effect of geonator transverser to switch control so give your opponent the bish falcon we take one of their tokens and because of the fact that they're actually one two three or five monsters in your opponent's field and then one two three monsters on your field and this gains a thousand attack Surprise, he's at 8k, so we can just use Machu Mech to detach, target the Vish Falcon that we just gave to our opponent, and then he happens to burn your opponent for 8k exactly. So it's kind of funny how things work, but um, yeah, it's a little clever, you know, being able to access the entirety of the Yu-Gi-Oh! toolbox in the game's history. There are a few FTKs, needless to say, especially enabled by this guy who got uh, banned pretty quickly into the game's conception. <laughs> Um, okay, moving on. And Oh yeah, and the thing to note is the side deck, obviously a lot of anti-tier cards. We're seeing three shifters, um, some more like Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, obviously for some random FTK decks, like the Bamboo Swords. I know like some of them activate as continuous spells. Uh, two Nib just for random, you know, decks, maybe for, uh, for Zodiac as well, if they happen to go into four material Zeus. Two, three dimensional fissure again for tiers, and then some back row removal. Okay, third place, tier limits. Um, this one actually differs from the first place list by quite a couple of differences. Um, you can see here immediately, obviously, we're just playing like two of the Ishizus. Still really, really good. Obviously, these Miller cards are just absolutely insane if we pair them with like one of these broken cards, like Herod of the Green Light or Herod of the Orange Light. 
Um, we are playing a lot of draw power, so we don't really need to max out on a lot of cards. Okay, we have three Graceful Charity that triggers all of your tier effects. You draw three, discard two tier names. Ooh, that's like a plus five. Uh, we get a three pot of greed as well. Just drawing two cards is always good. Um, one Pearl of Rhino, obviously, again, we're drawing a lot of cards. We don't want cards that are bricks that don't do anything because we can only use them once per turn, right? So... Yeah, and then the interesting thing to note that I realized why tier limits are really good going first in this format. There are a lot of broken rank 4 XYZs that are actually banned in this game that are not banned in this format. So playing cards like Zephyros the Elite allow you to pair it with Keldo to make your broken rank 4 plays. Again, we can use three of our level 4s to make cards like... Um, Ptolemaeus, which is currently unbanned in the TCG, but in this format, they happen to have Elder Entity at the Thought, which, when it's XYZ summoned with the effect of Ptolemaeus on your opponent's turn, after this card was XYZ summoned, your opponent cannot activate monster effects for the rest of that turn. This effect does not activate. For some reason, Konami was just so crazy that they made this card and the DDD card, I think whatever the DDD rank 8 is, where your opponent cannot activate monster effects or uh, card effects after it's XYZ summoned, does not activate. These cards just happen. So again, like Kaliuga. After this card is XYZ summoned for this turn, other cards cannot be activated and negate the uh, card effects on the field. This is the same thing. It doesn't activate. It cannot be interacted with. It cannot be chaliced. It just happens on the summon. And then your opponent cannot use monster effects for the rest of that turn. So if Ptolemaeus resolves, they're not using any monster effects, which is crazy. Um, obviously, we can do that really easily in this deck because we are always like seeing our entire deck basically by drawing all the cards they're also playing three future vision which i don't think that they actually use the old errata because that would be too busted i'm pretty sure that they're actually using the new errata because of the fact that the first place deck did not play future fusion um but maybe uh, maybe they are using the old errata um i don't really see why this would make sense to play with the new errata because this has to wait a whole turn before being able to foolish the cards. So maybe they are using the Odorata. Obviously, Painful Choice is also another uh, choice that the first place deck decided to run, but I don't know why this deck didn't play it. But uh, they were playing three Herald of Orange Light um, and three Herald of Green Light as well to negate like the power spells that are in this format <laughs> that just like are crazy. Obviously, paired with a Miller is like very insane as well. Um, they are playing uh, Minimal Shizu Engine again, three Maxi, just like generically good in this format. Um, one Shadal Beast to draw a card and then also make a window, which I imagine is quite good as well in a format like this, where it's like special summons can matter, especially against FTK decks as well. This could just lock out their entire deck, right? If they don't have an answer to window. Um, we're maxing out on the Havnis, maxing out on the Sheeran, the good ones, and then just two Merlin and one Rhino because they're easily accessible, given that we're drawing a lot of cards. Um, and then two Instant Fusion as well. I guess it's only once per turn. So again, we're probably going to see a copy, chances are, by drawing a bunch of cards. So why not just like, not max out on the bricks that uh, have diminishing returns? One Crime, I guess, you know, it's good against like power spells that are in the format when you go first. Side deck 3 drill Knockbird. This pairs really well with Artifact Durindo, which can also be special summoned off of Ptolemaeus. Obviously, being able to uh, drill and Knockbird lock them on their turn because uh, this fact you can detach one and um, each player with a hand shuffles their entire hand into the deck, then draws the same number of cards. So, obviously, when they use a card to add to their deck outside of the draw phase, we can use the effect of Durando and then chain the effect of Drone Lockbird. So they are forced to shuffle back their hand and then draw no cards. <laughs> so essentially a very, very powerful um, interaction there. Three Nib, I guess we're expecting, you know, random decks. Maybe it's good against Zodiac as well if they're going for format Zeus. Um, three Gamma with the driver as well, just generically good going second. Two Mind, just, you know, it's at three for the why not. One Super Poly, one Imperial Order, one Royal Oppression. And it's interesting, again, to note they're playing one-ups because of the fact that we have a lot of draw power, so chances are we are going to see one or the other. So no point really maxing out. Extra deck is, of course, bonkers, as you know. it. We're already seeing, like, three banned cards here. Winda is really, really good, as we went over. Elder Energy Norden, which can also be special summoned off of Infusion. Oh man, this deck is just insane. Um, we can also potentially Super Poly into it, I guess, against some random FTK deck, like the Magical Scientist deck that we just went over. Again, you can use Bish Balkan as well as uh, um, the Machu Mech. Uh, Draco Stapila, just generic. Kaleido Heart, two Kikalos, Rukalos, you know, all the goodies that we are already accustomed to in our everyday tier limits deck that we currently see one abyss dweller against a mirror match and against you know a lot of other decks level of a chain we can foolish any tier name or anything really that we want during our turn 
And of course, the broken cards, diamond, because why not? It's good against dark decks. Second place was actually interesting as well. We saw a Mystic Mind burn deck. <laughs> the, the Mystic Mind just continues to terrorize players in all kinds of different ways. We're playing three Lilith of Lament. We're actually playing a lot of burn cards here, which is kind of an interesting decision. I guess they realize that maybe a lot of decks are playing answers potentially to mine in their main deck. So they're like, you know what? We can't afford to let them have a bunch of turns with Cauldron of the Old Man. We're just going to play a bunch of trap cards that just slowly burn them to death. Um, we are also keeping in mind that there are cards that pay life, like Magical Scientist. If they're going to pay down to a thousand life points, we're just going to flip one just desserts and that's game. Pay, uh, take 2,500. Uh, we're playing all the broken draw spells, three Grace Flow, three Pot of Greed, three Card of Demise. This card's still at three in the OCG right now. If I'm not, like, I just literally saw deck recipes this morning about Mystic, um, not Mystic Mind, but Runic, Runic deck out decks playing three of this as well. So funny to know. Three Terraforming. We're just searching mine in every shape form and way possible we have three pot of duality as well for that purpose three field barrier three mine secret blast just desserts secret barrel or gemma trio metaverse for the mine and one solemn judgment because we have so much draw power <laughs> and side deck just like generic you know maxi lava golems dark rulers for going second against like board decks and then we're playing all the mine protection deck uh cards going first three dark bribe three two solemn judgment and then to pair it even more we're just going further beyond after copies of judgment and dark bribe we're playing dark sacrifice as well this card is when your opponent would activate a card that uh, would destroy a card on the field, so mine or field barrier, negate the effect, then foolish one, level three or lower dark monsters. So we can just foolish the Lilith to uh, pay for that uh, rest of the effect there. But again, just trying to protection from Harpy's Feather Duster, I guess. Extra deck, literally, it does not matter because none of these cards I think were summoned. It was just filler. And then first place was Tier Laments. Ugh, surprisingly, not surprisingly. They're just playing, they decided to max out on Kelbeck as well. You can see there's no Herald of or Green Light as well. There's just a Herald of Orange Light, two Agito, uh, three Caldo. I guess they're just going for the Broken Rank 4 plays. And the one thing I really liked about this deck is they happened to unlock the Shock. They realized that how broken Shockmaster was because we can just call spells against FTK decks and they probably just lose. Uh, also, like, you know, in addition to Add the Thought, we have options. Uh, three Maxi main deck. I guess they expect a lot of tiers and like actual playable decks. Uh, obviously, being able to draw into happiness is also good because you can just mill and just win on the spot. Collateral Heart allowing you to interrupt. Uh, really big Ishizu package, kind of interesting. Uh, tier names as well, like quite hefty. Two of each, two Merle, two Rhino Heart, three Graceful Charity, three <laughs> Instant Vision, three Painful Choice. Painful Choice is hilarious because we just full this is like up to four tier names, three or four tier names, plus like maybe one of the Ishizu Millers or two of the Ishizu Mills. So we can guarantee that we're getting the effects off as well as a mill five. Um, you can also like foolish you know this can foolish any card it doesn't have to be monsters you can foolish suliac you can foolish i don't know heartbeat uh, just like it's crazy we just have options you know hello this is kind of crazy and um the one interesting thing to note is they didn't even play pot of greed i don't know why they did not play pot of greed we're literally just not drawing two there's no room guys pot of greed has to be cut from this deck we're just playing you know like graceful charity and painful choice is enough for the deck two pearl rhino because we don't want to draw more than one you know it's just like a brick we have a lot of draw power <laughs> but it still boggles my mind they did not play pot of greed how do you not play pot of greed i might have even just checked it in here for 45 cards because i don't know like i feel like the math is just like works out right that you seeing the plus one just matters better but i don't know this player won so they obviously knew what they're doing they also cited the bis deals i guess they expected a lot of tier elements the drone lock birds again for the ftks and all that yada yada uh going first called by the grave probably or going second rather i don't know Depends. Hand trap decks. Two, three change of heart as well. Maybe good in the mirror match. Three Imperial Orders. Surprisingly, they just like didn't. I guess they don't play Pot of Greed, so the draw power is not as good. They just want to see this. And then obviously Norden, all these tier, you know, Baron, um, Zeus, Shockmaster. Again, we went over with Azathot as well as Dugaris. Uh, I guess being able to uh, do some broken things by drawing cards. Drawing two cards is insane in this format because you know, Lord knows you're going to draw into like one of these broken cards. Um, the Ptolemy's stuff we talked about. They decided to play Redure instead of Level Chain. I guess being able to fuse on your opponent's turn is better interaction. And then they played Dark and Elf as well. So yeah, that's about it, guys. If you like this, rate, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about these decks and this format, more importantly, because I think it's just super nuts that Tier Limits is insane in this format. Somehow Tier Zero in a no ban this tournament where everything's at three. Let me know your thoughts, guys. If you haven't liked, subscribed, commented already, please do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one.